welcome team. You know when I say team, that's because I want to treat <laughs> all listeners uh, as as I would, Joe. The reason I say team to the listeners is I always, in, in, in any team, I try to expose them to people that may inspire them. So when I get a guest on, I know nothing scripted, but I know somewhere, somehow, we're going to help someone or inspire someone. Um, I've known you for a long time, Joe, so I want to thank you for coming on now, especially now you are a world champion. Um, we've, we're going to go back, we're going to go way back, um, but I'm going, I want to start, I just want to talk through this bit because you can't actually talk here. If you can speak. Ah! Talk to me about this. <laughs> <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> oh, I just yelled. I was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I can't even talk. And then I finished with my love you. And then was I just, yeah. And then I walked off. <laughs> so talk me through, but because like <laughs> your jaw was hanging down. Yeah. Like broken on both sides. And you've got a microphone in your face. Obviously, it must have been painful. But um, talk me through this jaw. Actually, let's go there first for the listeners that don't know that haven't watched your fight yet. Make sure you watch this world title fight, YouTube, Jai Apatea world title. You broke your jaw. Remind me from memory it was in round three on one side of your face and round 11 on the other side yeah. of your face. So by the time that interview is happening, your jaw's actually not attached to anything. Yeah, they said it was just hanging on by like a lig ligament and muscle. So it was just sort of sagging down. It was... Um and the, the feeling of the, how the jaw was sitting, like just saying now, I was, I'd try and push it up, but like it would like sort of, you know what I mean? Like one side would go high and then I'd try and like push this. I was like, it was just sort of flopping down here. So it was, when I think about the feeling, it's like, oh, you know what I mean? But we got the win, that's all that matters, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's probably one of the best post-fight interviews ever. Um, <laughs> So we've gone straight to your world title. We'll hang there for a little bit before we go back. Um, for the people that haven't watched it yet, I know they will after this, but I was sitting there watching and I do remember, because we have known each other a long time, if anyone was to ever critique you as an amateur, they would often say to me, oh, I'm not sure if he's going to be powerful enough or I'm not sure if he's tough enough. So I was watching that just going... I saw that uppercut you did that broke his nose. Yeah. So first of all, I'm going to all those critics. There's the power, <laughs> and then, and then I saw you go through. It was a war, like twelve rounds. I, had you ever fought twelve rounds before? No, first twelve round fight. Yeah. So I'm watching this twelve round fight, and I'm going to all those experts back then that didn't know if he was tough enough. I think he's proven himself here, but then also. The tough part, it even goes to another level when your jaw is just hanging on. Like, like your jaw was broken in round three and you outboxed this guy who, who many people said you couldn't win this fight. And then you break the other side of your jaw and it's hanging on and you're copping hits as well still when your jaw was broken. Can you talk me through your version of that fight? Ah, man, there's a lot of adrenaline, you know, it's hard to sort of, like, remember a fight when, you know, even like my amateur fights when I was fighting like three rounds, like, I'd get in there fight and then after, I'd be like, you know, that, that was fast as, you know, so, um, but, uh, yeah, the fight, man, it's, it's like, like, you've seen the fight, it was a tough fight, but it was more just the, the build up to the fight, which was difficult, you know, we, we uh, went through so many obstacles and, you know, so it was such a roller coaster that camp. You know, I had a like the fight was postponed three times. Um, you know, I just a couple like a week before where one of the second dates, I, I tore my like I separated two ribs. I, I tore I tore my rib off my cartilage and separated the other one and had to get a, like immediate surgery. And then we actually fought ten weeks after that. And everyone even after that was like, no, nah, there's no way he's going to come back to the ring, but. And even at the time, I was like, fuck, like, this is going to be like, you know, but it was more just, it had to be done. You know, there was not, not getting into the ring or, you know, 
breaking my jaw and, and not carrying on with the fight, it just was not an option. You know, it, it did not cross my mind to to not finish or, you know, like stopping that fight didn't cross my mind. So it, it's like, I don't know, it was it was like a no-brainer. Like it just, the show goes on, you just, yeah. like it, it was a world title, you know, like a world title. There's something in it where you said you went through a lot. There's something in that when someone's been through so much and they've made so much sacrifice and there is there is ups and downs again. That there's something in that that it meant more to you. I've got a feeling it meant more to you than him. Well, it must have. You can't go through what you did yeah. and get to the end of 12 rounds and yeah. win that fight. It must have meant that much. When you say roller coaster, what did you go through? Um, well, you just told me the ribs. Uh, yeah. It feels like there's more. <clears throat> no, there's a fair bit, you know. Um, right. How deep you want to go, you know? <laughs> so, Brother. Uh, Brother. How deep but, um, you want to go? You know, just the, there's the mental challenges that you go through, you know, like in a, in a camp and, you know, there, there was a few things happening back home. Like, um, you know, my nan was real sick. She was, uh, had cancer at the time. She, she passed away, I think, uh, maybe about 10 days before my fight. And then um, <clears throat> the, cert, the, the funeral was like three days before the fight. Like, I couldn't be there. That was hard, and you know another huge thing was my parents. They uh, they got divorced, they split up, and that was that was huge. You know, it played a massive toll on me, and that was happening while I was training for this world title. Um, so I was copping like sort of a couple losses in life that I was like, you know, that was taking a toll on me mentally, and um, like it was causing a lot of sort of emotional pain that I was like mentally just thinking, fuck, like what. You know, and the only way I could sort of escape it was physical pain. You know, like just train till I could not train anymore. You know, and even when I talk about my rib, like I broke my rib. You know, I broke myself. I broke my body. It, it, it's like your, your body's a machine. The way you treat it, you know, it, it, it can only go so hard. And, um, you know, I, crack, I cracked my rib a week before I actually tore it. But it was just painful. And I was like, you know, world title. I can't not spa, so you just, it'll be right, just get yeah. back in the ring and then, because it wasn't even a punch that, um, so I, I'd sparred a week before it, and it was, it was when I went to throw a punch, I went to throw a long hook, and then it just separated, and I was like, oh no, like, that's bad, and then we just went straight from sparring, and mind you, like, so Coach Mark Wilson, he was, uh, he, was in, he said the start of camp, he goes, any injuries? Doesn't matter how big, small, just be honest with me. Like this, and I go, oh, 100%, yeah, for sure. Oh, I'll tell you, you know what I mean? <laughs> and then I, you know, I get this injury, rib injury, and he's like, and then, um, so it was like the second round, the second last round, I tore it, and like, I've gone, oh, no way, like, this is yeah. my ass. And he goes, oh, what's wrong? And I was like, nah, nothing. <laughs> so <laughs> then, I, then I, I finished that round and inspired one more round while I've got a broken rib, like, just because I'm thinking there's no way, like, I have to get past this, you know, like, and then I end up going to the hospital and they give me the news, like, sitting in the hospital for like 80 hours, ribs, like, can't lift my arm, I'm just sitting there holding it, and then, um, yeah, we, we'd get a surgery, but the IBF was behind me, you know, they, they wanted the fight to happen, and the breeders wanted to get past me, he, he said, oh, you know, I want a different fight, he, he wanted to get past, and, um, yeah, so... IBF backed me when we got the fight, so. Wow, mate. I don't know if I just rambled well, on or well, no, 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 no. So, F yeah. First of all, <laughs> thanks for sharing that stuff because I didn't know. I didn't know. I'm really sorry about your nan and, and, and your parents. and like, That's what I mean. There's, there's something in it when it means so much to mm. someone. You can do amazing things, you know. Um, that makes it even more powerful now that I know that that those critics that once once would everyone's got an opinion in boxing, but once would go, oh, I'm not sure if he's tough enough. I think I think you've left mm. those critics way behind. But even in the lead up, um, I'd still make sure I'd ask a few people. Followed your career. We had a lot to do with each other early in your career, which we'll go to. Um, but I love following you, and I still make sure. I, what do you think of Jai's got this title? And, mate, some people said to me, hey, 
this guy's fighting is the real deal, brother. Like, if he gets past him, mm. yeah, he's, he's it. He is it. He's the top. You know, like, they, they were telling me this guy was that good. Could you tell me a bit about him, what, what the homework you did on him? Or? Um, yeah, I'd been watching him for a while, you know. He, he was up at the top for a while, like, at the cruiserweight division. You know, he was... Um, and I used to watch him and you... I watched him and Usyk fight. You know, I knew he was a legend, you know. But, um, yeah, I just... You know, there's a part of me that's... You know, I'm so grateful, you know, and, like, it, it, it is a part of me that's like, fuck, you know, kid from what a nobby winning world titles, like, it's crazy. But then there's the other half of me where it's like, fuck, I know if I've done that, you know, oh, I earned that. You know, there's, yeah, that, yeah. there's that part where I'm just happy to be here, but then there's the other part where I'm like, well, I want more, you know, even with this fight, like, yeah, I want a world title. It's not enough, you know, I, I, want, I want more fights. And like, and I know everyone keeps talking about it, like it's a big accomplishment, but in my head, you know, it's, it's just the start, you know, it's, it's, and I've got the taste of it now and, and I've showed the world and now it's, you know, now this is the time to make the imprint. Yeah. I love it, mate. I love it. And, and I, uh, I, I hope that when we post edit this, we're going to put some, some vision to that fight. Um, I'd love you to talk me through because I'll definitely edit in that uppercut. What did that feel like? Yeah, like, nah. That, and you knew you heard him? Yeah. yeah. Oh, see, well, like when I watch it, on the on the fight, like he looks a lot hurt than what I seen in the ring. You know, it's it's still he's still dangerous when I'm in the ring. You know, he, he's backing off. You know, it just takes one overhand ride or yeah. something. So it's not like he. I just went crazy and tried to finish him, but um, you know, I knew I hurt him, and and even that punch, man, I, I was I was throwing it a lot and sparring, and you know, I was landing it a lot, and it's actually a, a favorite punch of mine, and you know, but uh, me, Coach Mark, we we really sort of specific that punch out as well like we were practicing it a lot and then he was he fell in love with it he, he seen me start throwing it and he was like, he's like that, that, that's gonna work that's gonna work so then we sort of focused on that punch as well so yeah no no I love that like that part of the game that people don't even realize some people think oh that was a lucky punch but you did it a thousand times yeah we no we, we trained yeah. for that specific um, that slip uppercut, like we, we, we were, we talked about it for weeks. Yeah, I love that. And then what about when he hurt you? Like, was that the third round he got you? He didn't uh, hurt yeah, you, yeah. Didn't like me saying the word. Right? <laughs> when he, yeah, he's when he right? cracked that jaw. <laughs> no, yeah, he cracked my jaw. But um, What lessons yeah, did was, you learn I from I suppose that? it was hurt, but like, like you, you don't know, wanna, I was all right. You but, don't um, want to get hit again like that. What, nah. what lesson did you learn? Oh, man, huge, eh? Like, even... um. Like, so like he, he broke it in the third round and, you know, uh, like it, when I watch the fight back, man, I'm, I, I'm happy I won, you know, I'm, I'm, and I'm proud of my performance, but I, I also know I can still fight better. You know, I still, I, like there's, there's little things and, and I feel like that's how we should be, you know. Like, I'm pretty hard on myself, eh, like when I, like, like I hate, certain things I do and like stuff like that so I'm, I'm like my own sort of you know uh, but um yeah I don't know you just and, and just and finally just being able to prove what I've always known oh yeah. I've you know I, I wasn't one of these kids or one of these people that just you know that wandered into a boxing gym and was like oh you know I like this sport this this is a good sport well boxing has been imprinted in me yeah. you know boxing Boxing's a part of who I am. It's religion to me, you know. Yeah. Like I've known nothing else but boxing. Like, you, you, like I grew up in the gym. I can't remember doing anything else. Anything you else. know what I mean? So, and I've had this mindset my whole life. Like I am a boxer. You know, when they when they say, oh, you know, Jai, you know, Jai the boxer. Like, you know what I mean? And it's always been like that since I was a little kid. Yeah. And um, so I always knew these world fights were coming. I knew I was going to fight for world titles. So it was just. The accomplishment of finally, you know, I'm here where I belong, so. How good. I like the way you haven't given anything away to any future opponents there because I asked what did you learn and we just dodged <laughs> We just dodged that like you dodged punches. <laughs> very good, very good. But you did hint at something that I know will resonate with a lot of listeners is 
you are a true student of the sport. To be the very best of any sport, you have to be a student. And you just mentioned you study it and you weren't happy and you're going to get better and yeah. better and better. So you're learning even when you're winning, but you're, you're, a, you're a student and it's been in you. You've just gone where it's been ingrained in you. So why don't we go there? A family of fighters. Uh, your granddad, I know you have so much respect for him. Does it go even past him or is he? Yeah, the, so my yeah. granddad's father was uh, the so fourth generation on his side. So yeah, my granddad's father and then um, yeah, third of my mum's. So my 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 uh, mum's my dad used to box and then all like my mum's brothers and stuff, they were all kickboxers and boxers and then, yeah. Yeah, so your dad boxed, yeah, his, my dad dad, boxed. his dad boxed. His dad and his dad boxed. And then yeah, so there was, and then my, my mum was, her dad, she didn't box only like when I didn't clean my room and stuff. <laughs> but, um, and then yeah, her her brothers and stuff, and then and then me. So yeah, so um, I was fortunate enough to experience that. You know that that right hook you said where you hurt your ribs. Show me that again. Yeah, that long. Yeah, right. I, I remember you got me with that <laughs> when you were about thirteen. So for anyone watching, um, your dad threw me in the ring with you <laughs> to spar you, and I was like. I can't punch a kid. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to hurt the kid. And until you just went boom, 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 and like, mate, that was an experience for a grown man who, you know, I'm not a boxer, but for a grown man, he thought I, I could, I could hold my own. And then you get this 13 year old kid just <laughs> school you. Like, um, uh, I definitely know, and I can, I can vouch for. He was, it's in him since he was. You probably, before you could walk, you were throwing punches. Um, fascinating story, that. Um, talk me, your grandfather now, like, there was so much emotion in that post-fight. You And I remember in your interview a few weeks later, you talked about all you thought about straight away was family. Like, mm. family in your... I remember going to your fights as a kid and, like, the family and... They're making those noises in the background, your sister and all that. Like, family means so much to yeah. you. Uh, yeah. Talk well, me through um, that side. It's hard to life. talk about this stuff without getting emotional. You eh? get emotional, but, brother. Uh, <laughs> yeah, bro, it's just what we do, you know. What drives you, your purpose. You know, like, it's um, being able to give them a better life or, you know, like, man, I couldn't give a, I couldn't give a, accolades and you know people talking about me or pat me on the back like the like the fame sort of side of it like it honestly it's not it doesn't bother me you know like if I could go win world titles get paid and then go fishing and no one talk, hey, I, I wouldn't give a f you know what I mean like yeah, yeah. I'm happy to do so you know yeah. I'm, I'm not in this to be like a big dude driving Lamborghinis and you know wearing chains and shit I, I just man I just want to provide for my family um you know Train hard, be a f***ing animal in the gym, you know, have a good work ethic and catch fish when I'm doing it, you know, do a fishing on my time off. I love hearing that, um, be an animal in the gym, because I was privileged to do some work with you as a, as a um, probably in an influential stage in your life where sometimes I'd try to make sure you were around other animals in the gym. Mm. Um, so I would try to deliberately expose you to different people, but you tell me in your own words, like, does anyone influence you when you were younger? Is there anyone you studied as a fighter? This, um, you had to learn to train hard. Like, yeah. you weren't naturally a... a yeah. You, when now, if someone watched you train before this last fight, you were in beast mode, and it did mean so much to you. Talk us through like learning to be a pro and learning to train hard. Um, I mean, I, to be honest, bro, I don't, un, I don't think people understand what we're capable of. Eh? Like me as a person, like even me, like I've won a world title, but I feel like I can do more. You know, yeah. I, feel I can fight better. You know, if I train hard and prepare. You know, and like champions are born in the gym. You know, at, like great. That's what separates good from great is the way you train. You know what I mean? Um, and, and like, not what you do, it's how you do it, especially. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you give me and someone the same session for the next three months, the same training, you know, schedule, 
I'm doing it better than him, you know. Like, that's yeah. in my mind anyways, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, like, without trying to sound too, you know, cocky or something, but that's the mentality. Like, if you're doing 12, I want to do 13, you yeah, know, yeah, or even yeah. 14. Like, yeah. you know, and it's just that sort of mindset, that competitiveness. But that's what you need to have as an athlete, I think. Yeah, yeah. And you had that quite young. I'm yeah. going to go to a couple of pictures here. I wanted to ask your um, memories of these. Mm. But, and, but what you were saying about, like, who, who um, sort of inspired me, man, it's, like, obviously you got the people on TV and you see it all and stuff like that, but, like, oh, my paths crossed with so many, like, other athletes as well, and even, like, yourself, you know, like, you, 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 I've met so many people on this journey and you, you pick up the good from bad and, you know, I've still got so much to learn, you know, I'm not perfect. How like, old are you now? 27. Plenty of time left. So, but, you know, 27, so, you know, like, and people were starting to care what I do now, you yeah, know, that yeah, I'm, yeah. before, like, what, 12 months ago, fuck, I could go to the pub and do whatever I want, you know, go run yeah. a market, no yeah. one give a shit, you know, go like, there was no up. one now. Go and cheer for New South Wales. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they were getting in trouble, it's like, what the heck? <laughs> Talk me through that shot. Oh, straight after our fight. That was straight after the Olympic fight. Oh, um, the Olympics. Very emotional again, <laughs> but yeah, um, man. Yeah, it was a big, uh, big learning curve that day. Eh? Um, you know, I, I seventeen qualified at sixteen, and um, you know the the first fight I had was the uh, he he was actually ranked the best. You know, the the, the number one seed, and yeah. I, I got him the first round. Uh, the yeah, the first round of the tournament, and. Um, Man, I felt the energy, eh? Like, I felt like some of the trainers or, you know, some people there were just, like... It wasn't even, like, talking about how we're going to beat him. I swear they just go, oh, you, you got the number one seed. Mm. Like, that's all that... Like, I was like, yeah, and, like, let's... You know, yeah. like... And my old man, he wasn't, like... He wasn't a coach then because he had the Aussie coaches and stuff. So, like... And, and I was a kid, you know? Mm. They... they like I said, like, I don't even know what I'm, like, these guys don't know who I am. They don't know what I'm, you know, how good I am or, you know, but. So I sat in the crowd and the whole crowd thought you won that fight. Do you yeah. feel you won that fight? Yeah, I, I did. I, I, I thought I'd done enough. I, I, do, I do think it was a close fight. You know, I'm not, a, like, I'd done a lot of wrong things in there that I shouldn't have that really could have secured it. But, yeah, right. you know, it's, it's all part of learning. Part you of know? learning. Well, you, you made the Olympics as the youngest heavyweight boxer ever, I think, in the Olympics. Yeah. So that's a great memory. I remember it myself. I'm going to take you through a few pictures here. <laughs> Do you remember that one? Yeah. That, and the, yeah, that's another training camp that we had, you know, being surrounded by other athletes. That's right. It's, um, you know, that's actually a good memory. Eh? Yeah. Oh, I forgot all about remember that we, camp, man. But that's out in the, out in the mountains out in the somewhere. Bush, yeah. yeah, in the bush. We had um, some NRL boys, some fighters, some UFC fighters. That was a great camp. Uh, well, how old would I have been here, you reckon? 16? 16. Yeah. See, even that, like, 16, but I was with, what, NRL players and professional boxers, like, I feel like that's what developed me quick as well because I, I was a kid, but I was surrounded by adults, yeah. you know? Yeah, that was a hard day on the sand dunes, hey? <laughs> <laughs> Look at us. I was about 20 kilos lighter. <laughs> Yeah. But it looks like it's cold because yeah, your dad's fully beaned yeah. up and hoodie and I've got tights on. We we obviously weren't training. <laughs> uh, Wayne Bennett. Oh, when we went at Newcastle Knights, yeah. yeah. He's a cool dude. He seems real chilled. He's the man, brother. Chalk. Yeah, it's farmer mundane. How old Is were you there? Even that, yeah. Whoa. Man, I, I started sparring Chuck when I was, like, 15. I think maybe even the first time I might have even been 14, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Even things like that, like being a kid and... Man, back in... Like, I, I used to think... The, like, even now, today, like, you know, he gets himself saying dumb things on the media and stuff that make him look like a bad dude. My, my encounters with Chuck, the most humblest, nicest guy I've ever met, you know? Like, yeah. I remember the first time I met him, and this will never change my mind about him being, like, you know, like... First time I met him... He rocked up to a sparring day and the gym was full, you know, like people, old men, women, kids. He rocked up, man, I swear he said he shook every single person in that gym hand and said hello, gave him more time, 
sparred, like, I think, like, three different fighters, packed up, had a shower, and then shook everyone's hand when he left, you know? Gave him all the time of day, said hello to all of them. Not, didn't think he was too good for anyone, you know? So, awesome. he, oh, I thought he was an awesome guy. There we are again. Early oh, morning, sunrise. Another sunrise. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Vadiris. Sharks, look at me, I look like a baby, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Andrew Johns. Yeah. So you always loved, oh, look at that shot. Andrew Johns. Look at this one. Yeah. <laughs> Competitive as singlets. Yeah, look at it, look at it. You're working up a sweat oh, there, brother. The four minutes on. Four minutes on, four minutes on. Oh, <laughs> nightmares, let's <laughs> give me nightmares. Four minutes oh, on here starting we on look 20 kilometres. Look at this. Mate, I'll turn this up. <laughs> Look at <your> dad. <laughs> Brother, that's 2013. <laughs> that's nearly 10 years ago. Um, so this one I liked. <laughs> <laughs> Little RSLs and pubs, and they just put a ring up, and you know you got all the, sorry, <clears throat> you got all the freaking drunk people screaming abuse, and yeah, <laughs> you know that, that's how it all starts, man. That's how you, that's how you get so, all the experience. So that was like, <laughs> that's the I like that one because you're in like about from here to here is your warm up space behind a curtain. You go out and fight and. Drunk screaming at you, right. and now you're fighting on the world stage and pay per view, and you got people now challenging you for your title. It's it's such a good story, man. It's such a good story. The rugby league bit. You always love your rugby league. Um, yeah, I'm not like a uh, I'm not like a rugby league wizard, you know. Like I don't know like the ins and outs. Of, but what I am, bro, I just like I'm loyal to a team, you know, like. Like the Blues, man, I'm a diehard Blues supporter. You know, yeah. I don't even know who's in the team sometimes, but I just like up the Blues. I just, yeah, yeah. And, and like, I just love the banner, you know, like me and my cousins and stuff. We just give it to each other, eh? Yeah, like, yeah. But I well, just, we were going to try to get you into camp, but you were going through the surgery. Yeah, yeah. This year. Uh, the whole team sat back and watched the fight, so. Um, that's crazy, eh? That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, and the family's got some sport. Cousins and whatever, you've got um, cousins who played NRL, cousins who play soccer, like the whole family's athletic, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, uh, especially like the open time, like Polynesians, like they're known for like, um, you know, singing and stuff like that. Yeah, we don't have many singers in my family. Whoa, whoa, hang on. Sports. This could be exclusive. <laughs> this is Are you going to sing no, for me? <laughs> no, no. Well, we just, we just, sports was just something we took so serious, you know, like, oh, like, even I remember being so young, like little kid, man. All we used to do is play footy in the like Nana and Granite's front yard and like kick ball in the backyard. Bas they go to basketball. Like it was just, you know, and we just, yeah. every time we have family barbecues, it was just like a sports game. We we're just playing sports, we we're doing something, like, you know, and, yeah. and then like because I had older cousins, younger cousins. They're pretty competitive too, you know, and then yeah. and then you got the older older cousins all gene us up, like all the kids going, oh, do you stuck with each other, you know? So <laughs> it's um yeah, and like it's it happens with me now, you know. I got my yeah. little nephews. I'm like, hey, can you just tackle it, you know? So, it's, so what uh, sport are the nephews into? Where are we heading? Right oh, now? they're only young, you no, know. No. They're real young. Yeah, like uh, uh, Shia's only like what four and a half, and uh, JL's two. So you know, Mia, but yeah, they're only like real toddlers and stuff. Yeah, right. Because you do, you do have some crazy genes in the family, athletic genes. Ben Roberts, who was on that camp with us, and one of the photos there. Yeah, he is. He's an international, international yeah. rugby league. He's a cousin, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Tim and Cahill, cousin, soccer yeah. player. The, he doesn't need any introduction to the podcast. <laughs> Tim, if you're listening, <laughs> you can come on an episode if you want. But so, yeah, the, the genes, the athletic genes are there, but the, the deep stuff I've felt from you, how much it means and the hard grinding stuff is, is where the magic happens, you know? Yeah. There's, there's obviously talent there and there's athletic skills, but... There's some real substance in it, mate. That's why I'm just going to love watching you the next 10 years. Uh, I want to see you do your fishing show because you're fishing. <laughs> um, maybe we launch it here, Jayapatea Fishing Channel. Um, 
that's cool that you do that. You know, like it's um, you're a real you're a real dude. You're, you're a real person from Central Coast. I've heard you say this on your thing. I'm from the Central Coast. Just a kid that just mm. had a crack. Um, you're a loyal person with your with your mates and that. I've noticed you've always been this type of person that uh, if you're ever in any trouble, you want you by your side. Not only for your boxing <laughs> skills, but you seem like you're just you're just down to earth. You're down to earth. Um, whether you like it or not, though, you have to go in this marketing type, spruiking yourself at some stage. Yeah. Like Floyd Mayweather, who I know you've studied a lot, he does drive the Lamborghini. He's had to change yeah. and throws the money. But he sells. Like how? How are you going to sell? Like, or you're not bothered if you sell or not? Nah, obviously you have to sell. You know, you have to. You have to. Uh, you know, but I. I don't know. It's it's, it's a funny thing. You know. Um, you know, obviously even being like, like I, I feel like all this camera stuff, man. This this was the hardest part to sort of learn and get used to and stuff like that. You know, being comfortable here, like, boxing. Like I said, oh. I've been boxing my whole life. Getting in the ring's the easy part for me, you know, the training, the, oh, I love that shit, you know, this is, that's what I do, it comes, it comes natural, but I feel like the selling part where you gotta get in front, of, and like, boxing my whole life, you know, it was uh, anti-social as well, you know, like we, we do meet a lot of people and stuff like that, but you're taught to think a different way, you know, the way, the way, I, the way I was raised, I'm, I'm taught to, I, I was taught to not, not do what everyone does, not, not, not you know, like, Try to try to be different. Try to be separate. And now, and now, when I'm older, I've got to try and relate to people and, and, and be likable. It's like it's it, there's two sides of it, you know. And especially when I'm in training, you know, because uh, there, there's that part of me like we just went over to Samoa, man, and you know we we want to help people over there. Like we and like it's crazy that, like I said, I'm a kid from a central coast, but man, we're, we're capable of actually helping kids, changing their lives, and I feel like that is insane you know and um and then there's that other side of me where once i'm in camp and i'm just like well get the f out of my way you know what i mean you're either moving at this pace or beat it you know what i mean like that's the mindset you got to have when you're chasing something you know yeah. like I, i'm going here and i'm moving at this pace if anyone that's willing to move at this pace with me let's do it if you're not if you're going to slow this pace down beat it you know what i mean and that's the mindset you gotta have when you're focused but then there's the other side where you're like you want to be nice and friendly, so it's it's a weird balance. But you know, when they say sell, like there's all this, like the fight. Like people get so mixed up these days with showbiz and and being a fighter. You know, they they're up on stage like just saying dumb shit and pushing each other like for an act. Like it's it's not really my style. You know what I mean? And and it's not my style to also. Um, like bag on people and shit like that, you know, like, don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect, you know, like I've, you know, yeah. say dumb shit every now and then, but yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I think a lot to do with, with my granddad as well, you know, like he, he sort of taught us like, your your opponent's never your enemy, you know, you're, you're, you, it's a sport, but um, in saying that, you know, you fight to win, you yeah. know, I, I don't know. No, it's, no, no, I tell you what, I could be wrong, but I hope I'm right. I think this is going to sell even bigger. If you stay authentic to you, like you've just said, what your granddad, like it's in you, it's influenced you. If you stay you, like even your genuine, uh, that feeling you had when you can go and help kids, like you stay genuine, you stay respectful, you stay humble you. I think that's the way, look, I'm not a boxing selling uh, promoter yeah. expert here. I can just feel it. If you stay you, that's going to eventually sell. Mm. Yeah, I try. Like, I try. <laughs> like, I and I love that you're honest enough to say that. Like, yeah, there's people that are doing some pretty dumb stuff to try to mm. sell a fight. But and then when you, it just feels like when you do do that stuff, like the, like the pushing and the shoving and the, like, and like saying dumb things, like it's it's completely just to build a fight, you know. And it's but like, people love it. So when you don't do it. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's becoming yeah. boring. So it just becomes like, fuck, what do you do? You know, you, you gotta you gotta talk shit to be noticed. You know, like I don't know, and especially with social media these days, mm. you know, everything's clickbait and stuff. So yeah, yeah, so. yeah. I tell you what, I don't even know where I'm going with this, but you're just interesting me because, yeah, like if you could stay you, um, 
But I asked you, we started talking about rugby league. Like rugby league have a history of fans and a history. Like dad passes down the jersey to son who passes yeah. it down to his son. Like it, there's a fan base. Like you have to build your own fan base, but that's it. But you need to do it by staying yeah. you. Who's the most famous fisherman that you watch on YouTube? Like, Wait, uh, He's actually the old footy player, E.T. E.T. Well, that's what we've got to do. Oh, and, um, we need to reach out to E.T. to take you. And, 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 and GT Buster. Do you watch GT Buster? No, no, no. Ah, no he's no. an old Raiders. Well, I forgot his name. GT Buster. I forgot his name. Oh, and um, Sammy Hitsky. I watch heaps, bro. I just... I, I, My son I love... watches this one, Brody Moss. Yeah? Like... I think what we're going to do, we're going to call these, um, we're going to call these fishermen guys, because this is you. It's what you do. Yeah. Take you out <laughs> on the boat, and let's get some real fan base. Yeah. Let's get some, like all those people in Somalia. You go and help kids, mm. like all the ones on the coast here that you, you want to help, like the Polynesians that you want to influence positively. Let's stay you. I don't even know if this is going to make the podcast, but I just, I don't know. There's <laughs> something in that. There's something in that. Yeah, well, you know, just trying my best, you know. I suppose that's all we can do. I listened to a... I don't know if you remember, me and you, I watched myself back, it was horrible. Um, but we, <laughs> did, we did an interview for someone when you were making it to the Olympics. And um, <coughs> I, you know, I said he's going to be a world champion one day and all that, and I talked it all up. But you actually said, I want to buy my mum a house. Mm. Is that still the case? hundred percent, yeah. Okay. Is that... I'll get there. We're on the way? We're getting there? Getting there. I'll we'll get there. See, there you go. That's what I'm saying about stay you. Like, that's authentic. That's real mm. you. And there's yeah. stuff that's driving you. Like, we went there before with family and tears started welling in your eyes. Like, that's powerful, man. That's powerful. So yeah. mum's still going to get this house. Yeah, bro, for sure. You said it was going to be on the beach. <clears throat> but it's a world title status now, so I want all of them. You know, like, I don't want to stop till, bro, sister's taken care of, you know, mum's taken care of. Everyone can just relax, you know, that's my drive. I'll do, I'll lose my good days so they can have more better days, you know. That's the sort of mindset I've, I've sort of really knuckled down on it like, you know, let's do it. I'll make the sacrifice. Brother. Yeah. Pain Away is Australia's number one spray and cream topical pain relief brand containing naturally derived active ingredients and we are proudly Australian made and owned. Pain Away pain relief creams and sprays are available at all chemist warehouse stores and leading pharmacies across Australia.